Harbour traffic, heading up to 744 Hotel Sierra, at the Long Beach International Gateway Bridge, south westbound through the port, 800 feet, Harbour traffic. Get rid of that ambiguity, clarity, brevity, accuracy, fundamentals of what we do. Get those things right, you know, and, and you'll, you'll be fine. Hey guys and welcome to another helicopter video with Anthelion Helicopters. My name is Alex Chaun. Today we are going to cover radio communication, uh, mainly for helicopters. It's a complex subject and one that I know you guys uh, you know, sometimes struggle with when you're new pilots. But the purpose of today is sort of unpack it like an onion, decipher it and hopefully make it make more sense to you. Even if you are a pilot, a budding pilot, an aspiring pilot, the idea is let's start making sense of radio communication so that you can apply it to your training and uh, move forward with your careers. We're actually going to split this into two videos today because there is so much information on basic radio communication. Um, again, I can't cover absolutely everything in it and uh, you know, please forgive me if uh, uh, I missed something off here. Please put it in the comments and I will attempt to get, it, get back to it and reply to it. Uh, the purpose is really going over a flight and then following in a sort of chronological order on leaving somewhere, transitioning somewhere, reporting in uncontrolled airspace and coming back somewhere. So, you know, you'll follow a sort of flight path that we do and hopefully by doing that we'll cover all of the different basic VFR radio communication bits uh, that you guys will do in your training and apply it to, to, you know, to your own training and hopefully it will help. All right guys, with that being said, let's get in the aircraft, let's get in the studio, let's start unraveling all of this and explaining it and I hope you guys enjoy it. Robbish Tiger Morning Helicopter 744 Hotel Sierras with you at Atlantic Aviation for a West Wardlow departure south turn the river information gulf. Now, I know there's a lot of people out there that this is one of the things when you're training that you get super confused by and pretty intimidated by. I know I did when I was learning 20 odd years ago that uh, you know, radio communication is one of those things uh, in aviation, especially when you're learning helicopters, that is really intimidating. And the purpose of today's video is to try and unpack some of that. Obviously, you know, I can't go into absolutely everything. You know, it's a bit like an Alice in Wonderland uh, rabbit hole. There's just so much information out there and so many things that we could talk about. Um, but the purpose today is really just to go into the fundamentals, the best practices, uh, cover some of the key areas that you'll be going uh, with in your flight training uh, and really unpack as much as I can and simplify as well as hopefully give you some good hints and tips to remember along the way. Um, we'll intersperse it with the helicopter versus me talking here just so that you're not listening to me for 20 minutes to drivel on uh, in front of a camera uh, and the idea is that we, we give you a bit of information then we'll put you in the aircraft so you actually see it in practice uh, so it all makes sense. So, without further ado, let's get into it. Temporary flight restrictions in effect for the Los Angeles area, including several areas of prohibited airspace. Contact flight service for additional information. By the initial contact, you have Gulf. Lombage Tower, good morning. Helicopter 744 Hotel Sierras with you at Atlantic Aviation for a West Wardlow departure south. Turn the river information, Gulf. Okay, so... Now that we've sort of introduced what we're on about here, let's start delving into the, this whole subject a little bit more deeply. So again, like I mentioned before, we could go into a complete plethora of different uh, items on this radio communication issue, and I really want to keep it as structured as I possibly can do today. So we'll kind of be following an actually a, a kind of a flight, a typical flight round here near, near Long Beach as well, and that kind of covers a lot of the different aspects. So we'll cover departure procedures from an airport, we'll cover transitioning airspace, and we'll cover arrivals to an airport. And these are controlled airports today. We're, we're not doing uncontrolled. That's a whole different subject we'll, we'll touch upon, but probably do in a later video. So departures, transitions, arrivals. Plus, we'll be looking at reporting in uncontrolled airspace. So in LA, that's either you're down in the harbor on 122.85, or you're out uh, north of the 91 freeways on 123.025, which is the you know, universal common frequency. So looking at what you do in both a controlled environment and an uncontrolled environment. Also, just best practice with radio communication in general, you know, with the main two points to always consider accuracy and brevity. Okay, so accuracy, I mean, like what it says, be accurate with what you're saying. Don't be very, very specific. 
don't say that you're somewhere, you're not somewhere, you know, you're, you're reporting a, 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 po a point where you're actually a mile away from, but you say you're actually half a mile away from. You know, it sounds, sounds a bit sort of nitpicky, but be as accurate as possible in what you're saying. It's easier for the controller to understand. It's easier for other pilots in your airspace to under understand. It's easier for other people when you're flying in uncontrolled airspace to understand. And it could be the difference uh, between a near miss or collision or not, if, you know, with, in terms of be accurate about what you're doing. Um, you know, be accurate about your altitudes, be accurate about the direction of travel, be accurate about where you are, be accurate. Also, brevity. You don't need to do an essay in the sky. This is, this is not about showing off how much you know and how much you can talk. It, you don't need to give a smorgasbord on what type of helicopter you're flying. You don't need to say, I'm flying a red R44 with gold little bits on it. And blah, blah, blah. It doesn't matter. It's just the tail number, right? Brevity. A, for the people that can hear you, that, you know, that they know what you're saying and how you're saying it, and B, if it's a busy airspace, there's a lot of people in there. There's a lot of people trying to get on. The controller's busy. If you get into IFR and you get on with approach control, boy, those guys are really busy as well. So you need to be short and concise and accurate with it. The controller hasn't got time. You shouldn't have time. And everyone around you doesn't have time to listen to a, a whole essay on what's going on. So always bear those two things in mind. Secondly, after that, remember the old maxim, aviate, navigate, communicate. However intimidating uh, communication may be, never let it interfere with you aviating and navigating that aircraft. Remember, it's always tertiary. It's always subsidiary to those first two. You must fly the aircraft first. No matter how intimidating and lost you get on the radios, do not put yourself in a worse situation with either with the aircraft or its navigation because you're worried about the radios. Remember that sort of chain of command, as it were, aviate, navigate, communicate. I can't emphasize that enough. I don't say it flippantly. Uh, many uh, accidents has happened because people were so hung up on communication, they weren't watching what they were doing, and they got themselves into a worse situation. So however much you're getting lost with your communication, take a breath. Focus on managing and controlling the aircraft first before anything else. Sounds a bit doom and gloomy, but it, but it actually is deadly serious with that. Helicopter 744 to Sierra Longish Tower, taxi to Cliff, take off westward to South River, Christian and South River Food. Roger, taxiway Juliet Cliff, take off westward low South River, 74 Hotel Sierra. Think about what you are going to say. Now, I know that sounds obvious, um, but a lot of initial students I've had have sort of splurged out verbal diarrhea without really thinking about what they're going to do beforehand and we'll get into that a little bit more you know there's aviation radio is very very regimented um, it's always the same procedure in terms of order of what you're doing things in which we'll talk about in a bit whether you're in controlled airspace or whether you're position reporting in uncontrolled airspace and or giving intentions in uncontrolled airspace I should say as well if you're doing a landing at uncontrolled airports you know there is very, very regimented stuff, and so it is extremely important to think about what you're going to say before you say it, and chances of you making a mistake are substantially less. Listen to um, ATC. There's enough, there's enough apps out there, live ATC and things like that, where you can listen to the control towers and just get used to how people talk. The more you can immerse yourself into that and practice, uh, you, may sound, you may sound pretty crazy doing it at home in front of, a, in, in front of the wall or talking to the TV, uh, but it will help. Um, so always bear that in mind. Just practice, 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 and always think about what you're saying before you say it. Always read back clearances in full. Now, what this really means is if a control tower or controlling agency gives you a clearance, you cannot abbreviate it. You must read back it in full, whether it's a landing clearance, whether it's a takeoff clearance. It must be read back in full. Things like hold, uh, hold uh, instructions must be read back in full. The tower must know, uh, be very, very clear on everyone around you, must be very clear on what you are doing and the fact that you know that you are doing it and they know that you are doing it. There can be no ambiguity uh, in aviation radio and instructions. Ambiguity leads to confusion, leads to accidents potentially. So that's why we require all clearances to be read back. And so what you'll see in a minute is my departure clearances I will always read back in full, in full. My arrival clearances, I will always read back in full. Um, you can abbreviate your tail number of your aircraft, but only if the controlling agency or the control tower does it first. For example, if I'm saying November 744 Hotel Sierra, 
and then the controlling agency reads back November 744 Hotel Sierra, well, they haven't abbreviated it. So I can't, I strictly, I shouldn't abbreviate it. If they abbreviate it, say for Hotel Sierra, great, I can abbreviate, right? But it always has to be led by the controlling agency and it's almost like a way of them acknowledging that they know your full tail number. But for interests of brevity, uh, they're shortening it to make, sh make the whole communication shorter because they, they have a lot of other things going on there. So, but always bear in mind, instructions and um, things have to be like that, have to be led by the controlling agency, right? Don't take the initiative to do it yourself because you think it's cool, you just can't be bothered. That's not really the point. Everything should be led by them. Uh, they're the ones that either have you on radar or have you in line of sight. They're the ones controlling all the traffic in the airspace and giving clearances or not clearances, the case may be, for everything in there. Um, once you get into more c in controlled airports or busier airports, they're the ones controlling sequencing and separation as well. Um, you know, we'll get into airspaces and all that in, in a later date. But however, be led by the controlling agencies. That's not to say, take everything I say as gospel, always have common sense. You know, little things like in class delta, people think the controlling agency has total responsibility for you. Well, that's not strictly true. You have the responsibility as the pilot to, to see and avoid other traffic as well in a, in a class delta airspace. So, you know, don't rely on it, but by all means, you know, you, there's certain things that you have to be, to be guided on um, with them. With that being said then, let's start delving into each individual aspect of uh, you know the, the of radio communication that you'll most likely get involved in as a student when you're doing flight training. Helicopter four hotel Sierra, caravans departing runway two six left. In sight, maintain visual for hotel Sierra. All right, number one, departing controlled airspace. So doesn't matter if you're departing a class Delta, class um, Bravo, class Charlie. Controlled airspace departures when you have a controlling tower. Uh, that is, is facilitating it, you always have to say the same thing in the same order. Um, you know, we already know about ATIS. Again, for me, after 20 years of flying, it's, I always forget it, even now. So always remember the ATIS, you know, and I, I say that before any radio communication. Of course that happens, right? Why do people call in the middle of videos? But, you know, nevertheless, uh, <laughs> lesson to self, put phone on silence. All right. Um, so it always is the same format. So you should never have an issue um, with, with getting mixed up here. As long as you learn this format, it will be the same uh, for, for whatever you do. Number one, who are you calling? In our case, it's Long Beach Airport. Long Beach Tower, good morning. Number two, who are you? I mean, in a you know, sense of an N number and phonetic alphabet on your, in our case, we're November 744 Hotel Sierra. So obviously make sure that you guys know your phonetic alphabets. Helicopter 744 Hotel Sierra. Uh, otherwise it's going to get super difficult. Number three, where are you? It's with you at Atlantic Aviation. No location on an airfield. You know, for us, we're at Atlantic Avi Aviation right here. But if you're in somewhere you're not familiar with, learn the airport. Uh, where you're at. Either go to Air Nav, Sky Vector, some of those, learn where you are in a position on the airport. Don't just say, I'm on the airport. Uh, it sounds obvious, but I've heard some absolute humdingers of radio communications in the past, and the tower loves nothing more than for you to just be totally vague on where you are, then look at there looking out the window saying, where on earth is this guy trying to call us right now? Um, number four, what do you want, quite frankly? For a West Wardlow departure, south turn the river in uh, you know, in our case here, we're going to want to depart, but you might want to reposition, you might want to air taxi, you might want to just hover somewhere, you may want to join the pattern for landing at uh, the pads. You know, it's all about what you want. In this case, we're going to do a westward low departure and a south turn at the river. And then you always end with, if you're in controlled airspace, like I said, the ATIS. The tower needs to know that you understand the current prevailing conditions at the airport. Everything from frequencies used to wind direction to altimeter settings, all of that stuff. And that's repeated every hour in the ATIS and it will have a phonetic uh, alphabet letter assigned with it. Uh, and the tower should, if you don't say that back, tell you, to ver tell you and ask you to verify that you have the ATIS. And if they don't, they're doing something wrong or they just couldn't be bothered. But theoretically, they should because you need to understand that if you're on the wrong altimeter setting, that could have pretty bad conditions. If you're going to take off the wrong runways, that could have pretty bad consequences. So always do that. So again, you know, first thing is, who are you calling? Okay, who you are, where are you, what do you want, and the ATIS. In our case, when we're doing departure out of here, Long Beach Tower, helicopter 744 Hotel Sierra, at Atlantic Aviation, requesting a westward low departure, 
left turn at the river from taxiway Juliet with information golf, I think it was, in this flight we did today. That format will always be the same. That is departures um, from a controlled airport, uncontrolled airport, we will look at in future videos. Lombage Tower, good morning, helicopter 744, Hotel Sierra's with you at Atlantic Aviation for a West Wardlow departure, south turn the river, information, Gulf. Helicopter 744, Hotel Sierra, Lombage Tower, taxi to Atlantic, clear for takeoff, West Wardlow, south river, Christian, uh, south river, approved. Roger, taxiway, Juliet, clear for takeoff, West Wardlow, south of the river, 74, Hotel Sierra. Kennedy, okay, Long Beach Tower, traffic departing Julia for a helicopter West Wardlow, runway 26 left, clear for takeoff. Clear for takeoff, 26 left, CAT 80. Helicopter 4 Hotel Sierra, caravans departing runway 26 left. Inside, maintain visual for Hotel Sierra. So now that we've got our Long Beach Airport, we've putted out uh, along the uh, West Waldo departure. We've made our left turn on the lovely clean drinking water of the LA River and we've gone down to the port. Now uh, we've been going around the port. Uh, we're going to make our first uh, uncontrolled um, position report, as we say. This is uncontrolled airspace over the port. It's Gulf or Echo, depending on how high you are. Where my Echo is controlled, Gulf is not controlled. However, we are doing position reports over the port because there is not a tower directly in control of us that we can talk to and is controlling our movements. So it's up to us to tell everyone around us as clearly and succinctly, remember brevity, clarity, on, and on what we're doing so that they can get a good sort of situational aware awareness uh, picture of what's going on. And so can we, quite frankly, of everyone else. Because in those sort of scenarios, it's up to all of us to maintain situational awareness and avoid each other. So it's really, really important that we do this, right? So, you know, in, in our sense here, when we were on the flight just now, or which, you're, which you're seeing, we're over the harbor, 122.85, uh, that is called harbor traffic. So again, who are we talking to? So this time, it's the difference between the tower is not who we're calling, because we're not calling a tower, but it's the area of where we're actually talking to right now. So in, in this sense, it's harbor traffic. So harbor traffic, again, who we are, Helicopter 744 Hotel Sierra, where are we? So in, in this case, we were at the Long Beach Pacific Gateway Bridge, used to be called the Gerald Desmond Bridge. I can't remember the name because it's too long and it should have just been called the Gerald Desmond Bridge or the new Gerald Desmond Bridge, but you'll see from the video what it's called. So again, it's where you are. And again, be specific. Harbor traffic, Helicopter 744 Hotel Sierra is at the Long Beach International Gateway Bridge, southwest bound through the port, 800 feet, harbor traffic. You know, if you're half a mile to the east of it, say you're half a mile to the east of it, don't say you're on it. If you're not on it, that doesn't help anyone around you, especially if it's busy areas that lots of people congregate around. Be very specific about where you are. So once you've said where you are, even if you're half a mile to the east, blah, 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 you know, also say at that point, what are you going to do uh, now? Are you going to do an orbit? Are you going to go left, right, north, south, east, west? Well, what are you up to there? You know. Um, if you're doing a left orbit, say you're doing a left orbit. If you're doing a right orbit, say you're doing a right orbit. If you're headed eastbound, westbound, you're going to reverse course, say that. As much information as you can give those people around you to make their decisions on and avoid where you're going, the better. So again, be clear, be concise, but be brief at the same time. You don't need to give a whole essay about that your, your flight plan that around LA for the next 10 minutes. Just say what you're immediately doing. Also very important, in uncontrolled airspace, say your altitude as well, right? You know, again, tower doesn't know, there's no one reporting, uh, no one fixed your transponder unless everyone's got something at read ADSB, uh, how high you are, right? Assume people don't have, uh, you know, anything to do with that, so you always have to say how high you are. 800 feet. And then, usually because there are many, usually, you know, on a lot of these uncontrolled frequencies, um, there may be, especially uncontrolled airports as well, there may be different airports or different areas using the same frequency. So always repeat back which bit you are talking to at the end of the radio transmission, just in case someone hopped in on the, in the middle of your call, but they happen to be at a completely different place on the same frequency. Harbor traffic. So in our case, here we are trundling over the harbor. Harbor traffic, helicopter 744 Hotel Sierras at the new Gerald Desmond Bridge, I'm gonna call it for want of a better word. 
heading uh, westbound at 800 harbor traffic. Right, then we've covered all of our bases. Everyone knows exactly where we are. We're at that bridge. We're going westbound. People will extrapolate. We're going to go going towards Torrance. We're at 800 feet. And again, I've repeated where I'm at. I'm at, on, at the harbor on harbor traffic. You'll see this more in uncontrolled airports. When around here in LA, you know, a common uncontrolled frequency is 122.9. And there's about three or four airports that use that very, very same frequency in the uncontrolled environment. And that can get super confusing and pretty dangerous if you jump on a call and then suddenly you're thinking you're at one airport and there's some traffic in there that's about to conflict with you. But then at the end of the call, they say, oh, they're at a different airport. And you're like, oh, thank God for that. And, you know, however, that's why we say it. So, so you know, you know when, when multiple airports are using the same frequency, the, the norm gets confused. Less of an issue on harbor and common frequencies, but it's still just good practice. So there we are. That's position reporting in the uncontrolled environment. Again, remember, it's just pretty much the same as a controlled environment. Uh, you're just adding things like altitude in there and direction about essentially what you are doing. It's not what do you want, it's what you are doing at that point. And always, always, always give your altitude. All right, guys, well, that's a wrap for today. Uh, part one is done of radio communication. Uh, we're going to pick up where we left off in part two and really start going over all the other parts of the, the VFR radio communication that we haven't covered today. Hope you guys enjoyed it and uh, let us know if you've got any comments and look forward to seeing you next time.